Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story. As proudly we hail Sarah Gertrude Banks, M.D. story will begin in just a moment. But first... Young woman, there's an exciting future for you in Air Force Blue. Yes, today the WAF, Women in the Air Force, urgently need qualified young women between the ages of 18 and 34. Serve in an important job in an interesting place. Become a part of the Air Force team. Right now, you can secure information about the future for you in Air Force Blue at your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Do it today. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, A Woman's Place. Our story is about a pioneer, not the kind that shoots her way out of Indian ambush, but rather one who clears a path through the wilderness of prejudice, Sarah Gertrude Banks. Born June 11, 1839 in Oakland County, Michigan, she was a descendant of Miles Standish. Probably from her pilgrim forefather, she inherited independence and the determination to make her own way in life. Otherwise, What can explain the decision of a country girl to enter a profession where no woman was welcome? That profession was medicine, the time-honored stronghold of men. Uh, Let me go. Come on, come on. I've got to see Dr. Banks. Uh, It's dreadfully important. But I've told you she can't be disturbed now. What Uh, is uh, all this commotion out here? Let her go, man. uh, Dr. Banks, I've tried to tell this young lady you were busy, but she insists upon seeing you. Oh, please, Dr. Banks, you've got to help me. Father just doesn't understand that I want to be a doctor like you. I tried to... Oh, t- I see. Well, perhaps we can set him straight. Won't you come into my office? Thank you. But Dr. Banks, you said... It's all right, Maggie. You did your best. Uh. Now then, just what is it I can do to help you, Miss... Uh... Goodwin. Jill Goodwin. Well, I... I don't know exactly, Dr. Banks. If you could write a letter to my father, perhaps. He says that women have no right to even hope to be doctors. That it's a man's profession. I tried to tell him that this isn't the Middle Ages anymore. After all, this is 1916. But he just won't listen. He says a woman's place... Is in the home. Yes, I've heard that all my life. But that didn't stop you, and now you're famous. That's why I thought, if only you would talk to Father or write to him, I'm sure he'd listen to you. Whether he'd listen or not is beside the point, my dear. It's you yourself that has to be sure. If you want to be a doctor more than anything else in this world, then nothing will stop you. But let me tell you, it's not an easy road. And because you're a woman, it'll be that much harder. Oh, I am sure, Dr. Banks. And I'm not afraid of hard work. What about heartaches? Heartaches? Yes, heartaches, disappointment, discouragement, despair. But how can that be? I suppose you're too young to appreciate what I mean when I say heartaches. I know I felt the same way as you do when I was your age. I remember very well how I felt the first time I was able to help someone who really needed me. I'd just turned 18 at the time. We were living on a farm in Oakland County, and my folks had taken the wagon and team into town to get some supplies. When they weren't back by 9 o'clock that night, I decided they must have stayed in town because of the storm. It was an awful storm, lightning and thundering and blowing something awful. And I don't mind telling you I was scared. The nearest neighbors were the Atkins. They lived more than a half mile down the road. All of a sudden, I heard someone banging on the door. Good heavens, Mr. 
Let him too, could that be at this time of night? It's such a night. Well, I guess I better answer. Who's there? It's me, Tommy. Tommy Atkins. Tommy, what are you doing here? And look at you, you're soaking wet and just covered with mud. Here, come in and let me close the door. I, I ran all the way. <laughs> What's the matter, Tommy? Mom, Mom is awful sick. Your mother's sick? Yes. The baby wasn't due for another month. And, and Dad's not home. Where is your dad? He went to town with your folks and he didn't come home. And <laughs> Mama got awful sick and she was crying and I ran all the way here and... I fell down in the mud. I'm so hot. Ah, oh, Sarah, you must come. Of course I'll come, Tommy. <laughs> Just let me get my coat. Atkins. Oh, is everything all right? Everything's just fine. Your brand new son is sleeping soundly in a bed I rigged up near the stove, and Tommy's safe and sound in his own bed. Oh, Sarah, I, I just want to say thank you again, and, and God bless you for the brave and wonderful girl that you are. In the ten years that followed, I developed quite a name as a midwife. In fact, whenever Dr. Morton was busy with another case, he'd send me in his place. And I thought I was quite proficient until... Well, it was the Gibbs family. I'd helped the doctor deliver Emma's firstborn, but that night the doctor's own wife was expecting twins, so he sent me to take care of Mrs. Gibbs. Everything seemed to be going just fine. But then, for some unknown reason, everything went wrong. Is it all, is it all over, Sarah? What, what is it, a boy or a girl? It's a girl, Frank. Well, that's fine. But don't look so disappointed. That's just what Emma and I wanted, a girl. Frank, I... what, what is it? She's all right, isn't she? I mean, she, she isn't crippled or anything. No, the, the baby's perfectly all right. It, it's Emma. Emma? Yes, Frank. She's dead. Emma? Dead? Frank, I'm sorry. Frank, you don't know how truly sorry I am. Sorry. Yes, sure. Sure you're sorry. But you're being sorry doesn't bring back Emma. Emma's dead, and you don't even know why. <laughs> Why? That's what I want to know, Dr. Martin. Why should things like this happen? Women have been having children since the dawn of time, and yet we knew so very little about it. Why? You ask me why, sir. I don't know. Sometimes I think Oh, but you're taking this too hard, my dear. Of course, I realize how you feel. It's not easy to see someone in your charge slip away, but those things happen. But, Doctor... Now, now, don't get the idea that I'm being callous about death. It's just that so often I realize that as a doctor, I am nevertheless only human. My power to control life and death is therefore limited. Limited by the lack of knowledge or the inability of the human mind to comprehend the ways of God. But there's no excuse for lack of knowledge. There's a very good excuse. There are just not enough doctors. What we need are more people like you, Sarah. People who are willing to go to work and find out why these things happen. <laughs> what difference does it make how willing I am? You're forgetting that I'm a woman. People don't want women doctors. On the contrary, my dear, I am remembering that you're a woman. I'm also remembering an article I read in the newspaper last week. What article? Well, it seems that the politicians we sent to the state legislature in Lansing are beginning to show a little sense. They've just recently passed a law which permits women to become doctors in the state of Michigan. Oh, are you serious? Of course I'm serious. Well, do you realize what this means? I can become a doctor. An honest-to-goodness doctor. 
Well, I'll be able to hang out my shingle and, and, and help people who need well, help. I admire your determination, Sarah. But let me warn you, it's not going to be easy. <laughs> It, it wasn't easy, but I was determined that I was going to be a doctor. So the next term, I entered the university, and when the registrar asked me what I intended to major in, I told him medicine. Medicine? You're not serious. Of course I'm serious. Well, that's too bad, then, because we're all filled up. All filled up? What in the world are you talking about? What's all filled up? Why, the, uh, why, the classes in uh, physiology and the general anatomy. Now, and... now wait a minute. What? You take me for a fool. Physiology isn't given until the third year. It's not a course for beginning freshmen. Now you listen here, young lady. Are you trying to tell me that I don't know what I'm doing here? Well, no. I, I have just... already signed up 14 women for medicine this term. And, uh, well, there's a lot of grumbling going on all over the campus. The, the students, the faculty, the... the uh, well, everybody's complaining about it. And I, I, I can't say that I blame them. <laughs> women, doctors... Who ever heard of such nonsense? Oh, so that's it. I'll have you know that I've got just as much right to study medicine as any man. My money's just as good as any man's. And if ability means anything, no, I... no, 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 just a moment there. You're getting yourself all riled up. Now, look, you seem to be a nice girl. Take my advice. Forget the whole thing. Why don't you take a nice, sensible course for a woman like uh, English or the classics? Don't waste your time trying to be a doctor. If you want to be useful, be a teacher. If you're quite through, here's my money. You will please enter Sarah Gertrude Banks School of Medicine. Good afternoon, gentlemen and ladies. <laughs> As speaking of ladies, I notice that there seem to be fewer here today than there were yesterday, on which day there were fewer than the day before. <laughs> I hate to think what will happen to the numbers of our little ladies' auxiliary after the next examination. <laughs> but though our lady companions provide advertisements, we must not stray too far from the matter at hand. Today, as I mentioned last week, we are to start the actual dissection of the human body. And since all our classes will be given over to this project, it will be necessary for two students each period to transport the cadaver from the ice room to the classroom. I have not as yet had time to set up a schedule, so for today, we will need two volunteers to uh, escort the gentlemen in. Well, I, I, I see that there are no volunteers. Oh, Mr. Dooley, are you offering your services? Uh, um, not exactly, sir, but I, I do have a suggestion to make, if I may. Yes? I, I'd like to suggest that, in all fairness, uh, we do it alphabetically. And since Miss Sarah Banks heads the list, she and her lab partner, Miss Gerhardt, could have the first turn. <laughs> well, now, that seems to be a very good suggestion. Miss Banks, does this meet with your approval? I'd be glad to. You, Martha? Martha? Uh, I suppose so. All right. Here are the keys to room 316. My assistant will be around there to tell you what to do. Uh, Sarah? Sarah? I think I'm going to be sick. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, A Woman's Place. Our story will continue in just a moment after this important message. Today, many patriotic American women are serving their country on the Air Force team, but more are urgently needed. The WAF, Women in the Air Force, is rapidly expanding to keep pace with the growing might of the finest Air Force in the world, and you are needed. If you are between the ages of 18 and 34, you are needed to fill an important job in the service of your country. For full details, visit your United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station now. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of A Woman's Place. <laughs>
Yes, Jill, I'm afraid that going to college in the 1870s was no lark for any woman. But for the first 17 women who wanted to become doctors, it was even worse. From the start, the faculty and male students as one body were discourteous. They embarrassed the young women at every turn, openly indicated how ill-fitted we were to enter the noble profession. When I volunteered to come into your class for an examination, you didn't tell me there'd be women watching. But, sir, these women are studying to be doctors also. Yeah? Well, I was brought up by God-fearing people, and I say it ain't fitting for a man to be taken off his clothes in front of women. But why can't I escort Miss Banks to the banquet if I want to? This fraternity does not invite women medical students to social functions. We invite only ladies. All right, maybe she was the only one in the class to find the solution. But she broke four test tubes doing it. Why don't you go home and hook yourself a rug for your hope chest? Sarah! <laughs> She'd make a better cadaver than she would a doctor. I don't care what you say. A woman's place is... Out of the 17 who started, only five women actually took their degrees. And even though we'd put up with a lot of insults and embarrassments, even though the work was hard and sometimes seemed unfair, it was all made worthwhile when on the day before graduation, I received a most unexpected caller. Uh, just a moment. What? What, Professor Mitchell? Oh. Won't you come in? Thank you, Miss Banks. Or perhaps I should say Dr. Banks. Not until tomorrow. Well, I don't wonder at your surprise in seeing me here. Well, it's just that... <laughs> Won't you sit down? Thank you. Yes, I'm afraid sometimes we professors, and that includes me, have been a little too quick to criticize and, yes, even humiliate you young ladies. Oh, well, it, it's not... No, you don't have to pretend... I know well enough what you've had to put up with. The only excuse I have to offer in our defense is that it's, it's taken us a little time to get used to the idea of having potential women doctors in our classes. However, I believe we've learned our lesson. You were very good teachers. I don't believe I follow you. Well, I mean just that we were so set in our ways of thinking that it, it took a long time before we were willing to admit that you'd make just as good doctors as men would. Had to be proven. We had to be shown. Well, Miss Banks, you've shown us. Why, thank you. I don't know what to say. You don't have to say anything. Just remember that if at any time you ever need help, please do not hesitate to come to me. I mean that now. No matter what the trouble is, I, I'd feel very badly if I didn't have the opportunity to help you out of it. All right, Professor Mitchell. I promise. Tell me, what exactly do you intend to do now? Are you going to open an office in town here? No, I've decided to go to Ypsilanti to practice. You may remember my roommate and lab partner, Martha Gerhardt. Yes, so she dropped out after the second year, didn't she? Yes, she decided she'd rather become a wife than mother. Anyway, when she married, they moved to Ypsilanti. And she writes there is a crying need for doctors in that community. Well, the people of Ypsilanti don't know yet what a good doctor they're getting. <laughs> Thank you again, Professor Mitchell. Actually, I don't know how long I'll stay there. I'm really interested in someday opening a clinic, especially for women. Well, that's a very worthy goal. Wherever you go, Miss Banks, the best of luck to you. As I said before, if you ever need help, just let me know. Uh, oh, oh, oh but just a little uh, rather, Martha. All right. And lift it, don't scrape. Ow. Oh. Oh. There. Well, I didn't want to scratch the floors after we worked so hard polishing them. Ooh. Now that we've got this sofa in place, do you think maybe I might sit down on it for a while? <laughs> sure. We both need a breather. Ooh. I may never get up again. I didn't realize how tired I was. You've worked too hard, Martha. Of course, I appreciate it, but we didn't have to do so much all at one time. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just out of practice. 
Honestly, I've loved every aching muscle of it. The place looks pretty good, even if I do say so myself. All you have to do is hang up your shingle and you're in business. Oh, but I wouldn't dare. I haven't got my certificate from the medical society yet. Well, you've applied for membership, haven't you? Well, yes, but it was just three days ago, and it hasn't been approved yet. Well, not yet, maybe, but it's bound to be approved by the time you start getting callers, so why don't we do it? Do you think I did? Why not? Come on. Uh, careful so you don't trip and fall. I'd hate to have you be your own first patient. <laughs> don't worry. Ah, you put these hooks in just the right place. There. How does it look? Mm. Very professional, I'd say. Congratulations, Dr. Banks. Thank you, Mrs. Schmidt. Uh, won't you step into my office? Why, thank you, Doctor. I will. After you, Mrs. Schmidt. Oh, no, after you, Dr. Banks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Martha. Oh. You don't know how wonderful and proud I feel. Oh, I think I do. In fact, I'm a little jealous. You're not. Mm, yes, I am. I kind of wish now that I'd gone ahead and finished medical school... But then on second thought, if I had you, wouldn't be here now, and it wouldn't be half the fun. Oh, Martha. Martha, I don't know what I'd have done without you. You said that before. Well, I mean it, and I... Hey, someone's at the door. Oh, you don't... You don't think it... Oh, it, it couldn't be a patient already. <gasps> well, if it is, he's awfully anxious to be your first victim. What'll I do? I'm not ready. Look at me. Hands are filthy, my hair's a mess. There speaks the woman in the doctor. Look, you go clean up. I'll let him in. All right, I'll hurry. All right. Uh, yes, sir, may I help you? Uh, Miss uh, Sarah Banks? Oh, no, I'm Mrs. Schmidt. Uh, Dr. Banks is here, but she's busy at the moment. If you care to step in and wait, she'll be able to take care of you in just a little while. Yes, uh, I'll come in, but uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I'm not here as a patient. <clears throat> I should say not. Oh, well, then what... Uh, my name is Gridley, Dr. Charles Gridley, and I've just come from a meeting of the medical society. Oh, I see. Won't you sit down? Uh, well, uh, yes. All right, thank you. Sarah! Sarah, Dr. Gridley's here. Mm. Dr. Gridley of the medical society? Yes, I heard. Good afternoon, Dr. Gridley. Oh, please, Stacy. <coughs> you must excuse me. I wasn't expecting anyone so soon. That is, we've been busy cleaning up the Yes, place. well, uh, there's no use beating around the bush. Miss Banks, I've come here directly from a meeting of the Medical Society. Then they must have taken action on my application for membership. That's right, Miss Banks, we did. However, I must tell you that your application was turned down. Turned down? Yes, the Society voted unanimously to reject all applications from women doctors. Uh, you understand, there's nothing personal in this, it's just that... Yours was the first one we've had from a woman, and the society agreed that they would not permit women to practice medicine in this community, ever. What, Doc? Good day, Miss Banks. I have other things to attend to. And you'd better take down your shingle. It's a lie. Oh, Sarah. I'm so mad. I, I, I could. I thought that was all behind me. Oh, I guess we should have realized then how it would be. It's just not right. And if this Dr. Gridley thinks I'm going to take this lying down, he's got another thing coming. But what can you do, Sarah? You can't practice here without their sanction. I know that. But I intend to get their sanction, even if it's against their will. They're just trying to bully their way through this whole thing, but it won't work. The state of Michigan passed a law allowing women to practice medicine, and I'm going to see to it that that law sticks. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Mitchell. Your presentation of the facts is very clear and to the point. <clears throat> now then, if you and Miss Banks would care to step into the ante room, the board will discuss the matter and come to a decision. Of course, sir. And again, I want to thank you for hearing me. Well, you think I painted a clear enough picture? I should say you did. Times I had difficulty believing it was me you were talking about. You're just being a woman. Put your feminine emotions away and, and rely on your faith in yourself as a doctor. Yes, that is good advice. But I just can't help being worried. Do you think that... Would you care to step back into the room now? The board has reached a decision. Oh, well, thank you. Please, God, make it be the right decision. <coughs> uh, Miss Banks, in view of the testimony given by Professor Mitchell this afternoon, the board has decided that... A woman with your qualifications 
as a definite place in the world of medicine. We've decided to make you a full-fledged member of the Michigan Medical Society. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. From this day forward, no one will ever be able to dispute your right to practice medicine in this state. And uh, furthermore, Miss Banks, if it's all right with you, we would like to appoint you to the post of resident physician of the Women's Hospital and Foundling Home in Detroit. In a position we feel sure you'll be able to fill very capably. What do you say to that, Dr. Banks? Well, maybe it isn't very doctorly, sir, but I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> What a wonderful story. Oh, Dr. Banks, I, I think you're the most admirable woman I've ever met. I'm very grateful for this opportunity, and, and I'm truly sorry for the way I burst into the reception room and begged for help. What a child I was. Jill Goodwin, you were not childish. You had the courage to do what you saw you had to do. Such determination won't do you any harm in medical school. Oh, and before I forget, I want you to write me occasionally when you get there. I'd love to write you. But please go on. What about the Foundling Hospital? I think I've done enough talking. It's time I wrote that letter to your father. Thank you, Dr. Banks. But that won't be necessary. You see, I've already decided to fight that battle myself. After hearing your story, if I can't persuade my father by myself, but there is no if, I will persuade him. A woman's place isn't only in the home. It's where she can do the most good. Young woman, there's a future for you in Air Force Blue. Yes, an important future in the exciting places of the world. Today, the WAF, Women in the Air Force, is rapidly expanding to keep pace with our defense needs. If you're between the ages of 18 and 34 and can qualify, the WAF needs you. America needs you. You will be trained to do an interesting job, a job vital to the needs of our country. For full details about a future for you in Air Force Blue, visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. <laughs> This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This program featured a cast of outstanding players. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>